It was recently reported that September U.S. retail sales surged 1.9 percent in the fifth straight monthly rise. Sales rose in every major category except electronics and appliances. Here with more on what that means to our economic recovery now is our chief equity strategist and economist, John Blank. So, John, even without the autos factored in, U.S. retail sales were up 1.5% at the beginning of the fall. Is this a positive sign of strength in the economy? Yes, it is, Terry. It's interesting. Uh, a dynamic that's interesting today, we're speaking on Thursday, the 29th of October, and we got the Q3 GDP report out, which was plus 32% for the third quarter. But interestingly enough, that's consistent with that retail sales number. The big hole that was plugged was an outperformance in personal consumption spending. So the thing that has uh, buoyed the economy during the pandemic is online sales uh, and also offline purchases that surrounded the house that people would go out to home and garden centers and whatnot. So this has been the surprise for a lot of people, but I think it's been a surprise because people didn't think through and around these numbers because really people are quite active. And when you have a disruption like a healthcare suppression, people don't just disappear. And that, I think, has been the big surprise, and it really shouldn't have been. Well, retail sales have snapped back quickly to pre-crisis levels here and have done so faster than many economists had expected. But now with a spike up in the coronavirus cases uh, in some parts of the country, causing renewed tightening of restrictions for especially restaurants and bars, are you concerned that a letdown may be in the offing? The answer is no, Terry. I think people have changed their behavior. Uh, masking is understood. Social distancing is understood. And people are understanding how to go to outdoor restaurants and work around people. So I think people need to keep uh, in mind that, that times change and people get more uh, adept at changing, too. John, the increase in September shows that the economy is still expanding moderately. With the personal savings rate having peaked, are you looking for that momentum to continue through years end? I am, Terry. I think uh, some of the earlier stimulus packages we learned, uh, people just saved the money. And so I think one of the other surprises is that some people were cautious and did save more early in this year. And there's going to be the ability to skate, if you will, into uh, something like a stimulus package. in, you know, let's say February, March. Do you think the holiday shopping season is going to say a lot about this momentum? Jerry, I see a lot of pessimism on the holiday shopping season. I think uh, maybe that is accurate in this sense, because again, probably people aren't going to go physically to Christmas settings this year because of the danger. And that will certainly slow down airline travel and probably physical present giving. So the, again, the, the play here would be, you know, gift cards and some kind of internet related purchases that people can do without having to actually physically connect. Things aren't looking good for another round of federal stimulus, but how important do you think it would be to this momentum that we're talking about? Well, Terry, I ran the numbers this morning. We're three and a half percent below the GDP level of the fourth quarter of 2019 before all this started. And that means if you have a $21 trillion economy, just do some simple math for it, that's a $750 billion hole. Now, that's not the hole that has to be plugged because we actually should have been two and a half percent above the fourth quarter number right now here in the fourth quarter of 2020. So add another $500 billion to the $750 billion, now you're talking 1.2 trillion, and that's the hole that has to be plugged. Now that's the stimulus number that you might keep in mind, but again, the stimulus number might be bigger than that even still, because now when the stimulus comes out, it will be 2021 that the stimulus package would manage to supply. So put another 500 billion on top of 1.2 trillion, and you've got some of the dynamics of what's going on with stiff fiscal stimulus. In that U.S. retail sales report for September, we learned about the strong growth of home improvement, garden supply buying. Tool makers was one of the stock areas benefiting from that. But has that trend been played out yet? You know, Terry, 
it's not, probably not played out, but it's going to be suppressed by the winter season. So a seasonality effect is probably going to play a role here, and that's what people keep, uh, keep in mind. Well, let's look at a few of those stocks in that group right now. Stanley, Black & Decker, Makita, and Toro. Right. Stanley, Black & Decker, it's a Zaxarek number two. I look at a chart and I see it was at almost 180 bucks a share before this recent sell-off. Now you can get in at 162. That's a nice entry point for a stock that's probably a little more momentum on it. Makita Corporation is a Zach's number one ranked stock. What's interesting about Makita, it's got a value score of F, really, really bad value score, and it hasn't actually pulled back that much. So I'm not sure what's up with Makita. My guess is it's just not a U.S. stock and it's not trading like a U.S. stock. So it's not moving as much and you probably got very little play there as that as that plays out. Toro Company, ticker TTC, is a number two ranked stock. This stock, much like Stanley Black & Decker, isn't in a correction. It's off from 88 bucks a share to about 82 bucks a share. Um, again, if you want to buy the dip on a stock like this, my two bets would probably be Toro and Stanley Black & Decker. That's the latest on retail with our chief equity strategist and economist, John Blank. With John, I'm Terry Ruffalo, and for our listeners, we urge you to make sure to check out zax.com slash promo for an interesting offer for your consideration. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.